Hi, I'm Dr. Agatha Biss. I'm going to show you a quick, simple, easy design for a crown with Vita Trilux Sport. Just give you a couple of tips and tricks. And you have the option of doing a margin line that's automatic, or you can do a manual one. If you do the automatic, the system will just pick a margin line. Usually what I do is I switch it to clinical view and see the difference between tooth and tissue. I'll do a rough version outline. So then I'm going to switch it to the stone model flip it over and that's sort of the key to seeing the margins in difficult areas especially if you have a little bit of bleeding or you're not able to use retraction cord things like that so we're going to look for the peaks so zoom in and then you're really just looking for the highest part of that area and bring it right up that's your margin line essentially because it's going to be at the highest peak tweak it here, flip it around, go to the other side. You can see how the software automatically, you can see it right there where we've gone too low. So I'm just gonna raise it right to the top. And then what I'll do is just flip it back over and just double check with the, make sure I've got all the margins. So, I mean, you could spend a ton of time here or very little time. The insertion direction, I just leave as auto unless I'm doing an onlay and that's in a different video, but for crowns, I do the automatic insertion direction. And then we wait for the design. Usually what I'll do is I'll actually just correct any thin areas initially. So if there is something like that, uh, I will let the software correct it. And then the first thing I'm really concerned with is the contacts. So we'll go to contacts right here. And I tend to set the contacts at about minus 0 0.1415. And uh, I just find that the automatic setting is a little too light and I, I'm not always getting a positive contact and I like a nice positive contact. I also tend to do broader contacts and just, you wanna check the area that the software places the contact in sometimes it's not, I mean, the, here, it's kind of in an odd spot. So what I would do is just flip it to see the contact. You can only pull the contact through by starting on the blue area that's already there. So if you start here, if you look at me trying to add, I can't. But if I start clicking here, I can pull the contact through and then flip it over. Where do I want? I kind of want it right there. So I'm just going to broaden it a bit and I'm going to erase this part. You can go back to erase and then you can erase this section. Okay. And flip it to the other side and same thing. I want it kind of in between the two teeth. So we're going to go right here and paint a bit of the broader contact. I'm going to tweak it in a minute. I'll show you that as well. So now that we've got this, you still want to go back and play it so that it resets at 0 0.14 in that area that you sort of drew it in. Right? So there we go. Now we've got nice contacts here and nice contacts here. So now I always tend to go back to reconnect to margin line, mainly just to pull that contact through all the way to the gum line. And then the next part of it is basically see if the tooth is properly in line with the opposing and with the arch. So is it flowing? Notice that I just did a quad scan. We don't do full arch for um, single crowns in general circumstances. And I find this tooth is pretty well aligned. It might be a little bit too buckle. Let's take a look. And this is one thing that I find for me works really well in terms of how, it, how to position this tooth. So what I actually will do is eliminate the adjacent teeth. So I want to see how the crown presents against the opposing arch. So we're going to eliminate the other teeth. And then I want to see where is the cusp? Where, where should it be? So where should the lower cusp be in this situation? It should be right in that fossa. So let's take a look. If I thin out my crown right here, I can kind of see where that contact is right there. I just clicked right here to show the distance map. And then I get to see that there's a contact right there. And so now 
I actually like to work with star models, so I'm going to switch that. So now we've got a contact. If, for example, the software didn't do it, let's say that it had it positioned differently. I'm just going to reset it for a second. I'm going to just kind of tilt it. Let's say they did it like this. And now you've got this cusp of the lower or the opposing, sort of where it's not supposed to be. So then what we do is we simply exactly that. We use the transform tool and then we just rotate so that we've got that cusp in ideal position where we want it. And then the upper, the palatal cusp the, of the crown is sitting in the fossa where it should be here. So that's sort of how I position these in three dimensions. And then of course, check it against other teeth. You still want it to look like it belongs. And now I find because of the angulation, because I did change the angulation a bit, it sticks out too much, right? So I'm going to just tuck it in a bit. So we're going to just bring it in a tiny bit. And now let's see how that looks. And then I'll just always check it from the lingual as well, might as well, right? And this one is maybe, I might bring it out a tiny bit. It's a little thin there. It's showing you that it's thin. So definitely want to bring it out a little bit get a little bit of thicker material. I feel like that cusp should be touching and it's not right now. So I'm going to pull it down a bit, show you that tool as well. So I'm gonna eliminate the opposing and then we want this cusp or I want this cusp. Whoops, didn't mean to do that, undo. You can always correct your mistakes. That's the nice thing about the software. What we wanna do is pull this down into the opposing fossa, okay? So we're gonna basically pick the morph tool and you can go free or directional. So let's say I'm going to use directional and I'm going to pull this up. I want to get this a little bit higher. Okay, so now and then we're down, I guess you could say, because it is an upper tooth. So pull it right down still not in contact with the lower teeth. Let's see how it looks. Still got a bit to go if I want a full contact, right? So it kind of depends on whether or not you want that cusp to be touching. Let's say I do right now. So let's say I'm just going to pull this one down, but not the distal. And at what point will it touch? We can always go back and tweak it. Maybe I'll wait, put this one down. So let's see, when will it, what will it look like? Still not in contact. Interesting. So now it's looking a little silly and long. So clearly we don't want that. And I might actually even pull this area through. And you can go anywhere on the tooth and kind of move things. I'll show you the free one as well. So if you just go free, you just can take this whole section and you can just raise it like that. And that's a really neat tool because it allows me to move the actual character of the crown that's already been designed and I don't have to uh, redraw. Okay? And then there's like a little thin area here. So we'll deal with that after. But what I don't like is the pointy cusp considering she's got a lot of uh, flattened cusp on the other two. So let's just take this through the articulator function and see what it does. So with the articulator function, I'll just zoom out. What you've got is if you use both teeth, you can actually see how she play. And then you can see how this function. So what I'll often do is I'll click the articulator off so I can flip the model around and then I'll remove the opposing so I can see what's happening. So we've got some non-working interferences right here and you can either delete those yourself or you can just let the system do it so you can just ask it to adapt the design to the motion that it detected from the patient so we're just going to adapt design and then it corrects it so if you play it and you can see that now we're good we don't have any interferences even though the cusp is that long now i don't like it looking like that i don't want to leave it that long so i am going to bring it back up it looks funny. 
So let's bring it down a bit. I meant to go directional. What I will do, I really like the wax knife. This is my favorite tool. So what I'll do in this case is smooth it out. So we'll go, go to smoothing tool, middle strength, and I can just clean it up a bit. And now it's looking a little bit better. You can bring it down a bit more. It's still kind of pointy. And now what we want to do is take a look at this crown on its own. So we click off the adjacent, the prep, zoom in, still have that distance function on, and then notice that it's kind of lumpy here and here. So I'm going to use the smoothing tool again, and then just kind of smooth it out a little bit everywhere. I tend to use a fairly high strength, and I can always add if I want to. I mean, you can always go backwards and then just kind of smooth it out here. It's a little too broad for me. And now we've got a nice good contact. Minus 0 0.13 is still really, really good. And now we're gonna look at the other side and same thing, it's really lumpy. So let's just smooth it out. But notice I've lost the contact where I wanted it. So we're going to add a little bit to here. Okay. And then I'm gonna pull it through to the gum line. I can always bring it down again if I want, but I want that contact in here. And then I can smooth, go back to smooth, and you reduce the size. And now we've got a nice, maybe just bring that in a bit. And this I would still be happy with. This is still gonna give me a good contact. If not, I can always add a tiny bit. So if you wanted to make it really, really tight, just go add, maybe make the size a bit smaller and then the strength a lot smaller. And then you just go click in one spot, click again until it grows a bit. And now you've got more of a solid contact and you can just draw it, paint it in with the wax knife. Make it broader and now we've got 0.12, it's probably 0.13 and now we're good. So let's say that you want to, oh, and then we're gonna actually pull through and reconnect again to the margin line. I want it smooth flowing through. All right, so now we're going to just eliminate these areas. So I'm going to go back to the wax knife, remove. We're going to go small size, very little strength. We're just going to like shave it a tiny bit, a tiny bit. I want to eliminate that and that. It. And then what you could do is potentially eliminate that and then you just really have a very solid area. This is showing you that it's thin. So then you have a choice to make. Do you want to keep going and just have this area that's a little bit more compromised or do you want to deal with it in the mouth when you can run it in her mouth through the chewing cycle? So that's obviously a personal choice. Sometimes I'll introduce more grooves. I find the system, depending on what it chooses, uh, it doesn't give me a lot of anatomy. So sometimes if I want more, I'll reduce the size almost down to the lowest, just slightly above, and I'll crank the strength all the way up. And then you'll see that you can get some really beautiful grooves. So it's your decision whether or not you want to do this. And then you could smooth it as well. So we'll, I usually keep the size really tiny again and just get the smoothing tool just so it's not so lumpy. And then if you are happy with the design, let's just take a look how it looks with the opposing teeth again. Let's say that you're happy. You want to just double check and see what's going on here. And yes, I did make my, my adjacent contacts a little bit more. This is, I think, measuring tissue so you can accept it. And then thin design on the occlusal. If you correct it, then you'll get those interferences back. I'm going to, let's say, accept it here, but if you let the system correct it, let's say, then it'll eliminate that, and then you can essentially just test it in the mouth. So now you have, it's showing that you have a heavy contact.
Again, you can always tweak it. So here we go. So we've gone from this to this in just minutes. Check it out.